We continue to preview the 2023 college football season, and today's stop is Butte, Montana. We get to visit with Coach Kyle Sampson, who is heading into his fourth season with the program, the Montana Tech Ore Diggers. Well, third season overall. I mean, that first year was was COVID related, so we'll 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 give you that, Coach. And but again, last season, 2022, seven and three, the record, another good season for the Ore Diggers program. Tell us a little bit about that, and also the spring game. You bet. Uh, yeah, it's something that. Uh... You know, we were we, we thought we had a good year last year. Uh, definitely not satisfied. Um, you know, being super close to, to winning the Frontier Conference Championship, but uh, you know, this is a tremendous league, and we know every single week um, we got to be ready to go. Um, but uh, we're excited for for what we got coming this year, and uh, we th- we thought the seven and three record was something we can build off of. Uh, we've got a lot of guys coming back, uh, which we're really excited about. We're we're a very veteran group, um, and now you know, going into our fourth year as a staff. I just feel like our, you know, the culture of our team and, and the standards that we're trying to live by every day are, are set and the guys understand that. And uh, we've got some great veteran leadership coming back, which which I think is the most important thing is we've got a lot of talent, but uh, the leadership piece, I think, is going to be the, that difference um, in, in helping us, you know, achieve our goal of, of winning a Frontier Championship, which uh, is not going to be easy. Uh, this, like I said, this league is tremendous. We'll probably have four or five teams in the top 25 going in. And, um, you know, we're very proud of, of being a part of this conference and and we know it's a battle every single week. And, and rightfully so, Coach. And the conference has expanded, too, including another quality program with Arizona Christian, too. We'll get to your schedule in just a moment. You talked about the leadership and players that are coming back. Let's start with the quarterback in Blake Thielen, who is coming back, uh, transferred into the program, injured right off the bat in 2021, and finds his way back in, coming in, and became a starter midway through the season. Talk about him. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know, really excited to have him back as as, as the full time starter. Um, he, he actually was our backup going into last fall, and then our starter ended up getting hurt after the first couple of games. And Blake came in and did a tremendous job, and um, you know was a huge part of our success. And uh, he still has two years left, so he's got you know he'll just be a junior this fall. Um, but he's been in the, he's been with us for two years, and he knows the offense in and out. Uh, kind of a cool thing about Blake, he played for my dad in high school, um, so the, the the background knowledge of our offensive schemes are, are there and. Um, it's kind of a cool little tidbit, um, but uh, really excited about him. He had a great spring. He's had a great off season and a great summer. And, uh, you know, he was a second team all conference quarterback last year and only playing in seven games um, and really expect some big things out of him. But, uh, you know, he's a, he, he does a hell of a job throwing the ball. But like I said, the thing that I've really been impressed with is I think he's really taken that next step with his leadership. Um, and that's a big thing at the quarterback position. Um, and, and the guys know, you know, who the guy is. Um, you know, and they, they look to Blake's leadership, and, and we're really excited about, uh, you know, what he can do uh, for us this fall. You have to find someone new to throw the ball to. You lose All-American Trevor Hoffman to graduation and moving on. So uh, talk about the wide receiver core, but also in the backfield with him has Blake Counts returning, who's been a, a perennial member of the all-conference team as well in his own right in the running back position. You bet. Yeah, I'll start with the running backs. Um, yeah, really excited to have Blake back for his senior year. Uh, he's been a three-time all-conference running back for us, um, you know, and uh, we expect some some big-time things from him this fall. And he's uh, he's worked he works extremely hard, um, and, and really excited about what he can do. Uh, we also have uh, another, you know, I, I I count him as a starter. Caleb Winterburn uh, was a guy that rushed for five or six hundred yards for us last year, and he does our wildcat quarterback stuff, and uh, we'll put him out in receiver. But he's another running back that is going to be a senior as well. Has been a huge part of our offense the last couple of years. Um, you know, so really excited about about those two guys at the tailback position coming back and just the, the ability to have two guys that can, you know, share carries and um, and really, you know, uh, really pound on the defense, you know, going into the fourth quarter um, at the receiver spot. Like you said, uh, you know, losing Trevor, uh, he had a tremendous career for us, uh, you know, left here with almost every single wide receiver record that we have. Um, so that's a big, you know, a big shoes to fill. But to be honest, uh, we've got some great kids that, that have played for us last year. Um, we, we get a returner back that was hurt all last year to a knee injury. Uh, Mark Estes is a guy that we're really excited about that we lost a couple days before our first game last year to a season ending knee injury. Uh, he'll be back. He was a starter for us in 21. Uh, really excited about him. Uh, Wyatt Alexander is a returning starter. Um, Kyle Torgerson is an all conference wide receiver uh, that, uh, you know, we won't have for the first part of the season uh, because of an injury. Uh, but he'll be back for the second half, and he was one of the best receivers in our conference last year. Also a great return guy. Um, and then Jordan Jackson is a guy that we're really excited about. Um, 
that, uh, you know, has played for us the last two years. But now with, with Trevor moving on, he'll kind of step into that that starting role. Um, and a kid, uh, you know, from Atlanta, Georgia, that's uh, that's going to be a big time player, I think, in, in this league. And, uh, and we've got some really good depth um, at that position. Uh, at tight end returning Logan Kennedy, uh, who's been a really good player for us the last two years, a two year starter. Um, we, we feel like we've got a lot of weapons, uh, you know, for Blake. Um, and, uh, you know, like you, we were talking before the show, uh, I think the, the most thing I'm most excited about is we return four starters on the old line, um, which that's a, that's a huge deal. We, our offense doesn't work without our offensive line. And, and, uh, you know, we're really excited about those guys. We've got a couple of transfers that have, that have came in that we feel like can compete for that fifth spot. We also have some freshmen that redshirted last year that are competing. Uh, we really feel like we could be nine to 10 deep on the offensive line, uh, with those four guys that have started for us. And, um, you know, really excited. Carson Schumann is the uh, returning all-conference player that'll be a senior for us at the offensive line. Uh, but Max Anderson, Brandon Spencer, and Safe uh, Benjamia are four guys that played played all reps last year for us. And, um, you know, as you well know, just that experience up front, uh, you know, you, you can't replace that. So we're really excited about having that experience up front. We're speaking now with Coach Kyle Sampson from Montana Tech here on Midwest Sportsnet. And I encourage you, Please continue to watch these videos as we preview the 23 college football season. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, we look to the defensive side of the ball, and, and let's just start with Gabe Zanetti right there in the middle on the line. Yeah, uh, you know, been a multiple you know year starter for us, you know, rotational guy. He started for us all last year. Had a heck of a year at the nose guard position. Uh, he'll play nose and he'll play three technique, so he's pretty versatile as that goes. But uh, once again, another another senior coming back. That's a that's a great leader for our defense, and uh, really expect uh, big things out of Gabe uh, in our interior D line. Uh, behind him, and, and you start looking at uh, the 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 linebackers, the secondary. Colt Wyant, one of those players coming back for you, and and you do have some experience there at the linebacker position. Definitely, yeah. Colt's been a two year starter for us. Um, he's still just he started for us as a freshman and a sophomore. Um, and so he'll be a junior this year and, uh, you know, has had had a really good year for us last year as a sophomore and uh, was elected a captain for us this last spring. Um, you know, we expect great things out of him. He's a, he's a great leader, uh, but a kid that can really run sideline to sideline and um, also a really good run stopper too. But, uh, yeah, Cole's, uh, you know, like I said, just a ton of experience coming back, and uh, we expect big things for him leading our defense um, for this next fall. Angel Sanchez led the team in interceptions last year. Secondary, uh, uh, a unit. Uh, other than him, what what do you bring back, and are there any new faces? You bet. Yeah, we're, uh, that, we we lost some seniors uh, last year. We had some really good kids that uh, had great careers for us that graduated. Um, but Angel is a guy that started for us since he was a true freshman, actually, um, and, and got banged up a little bit last year, but uh, was able to fight through a shoulder injury and had some had some off season surgery. But he'll be a hundred percent. Uh, or he's already cleared to be 100, I guess, through this year. But yeah, he did a great job for us. He's he's kind of played corner, safety, in our nickel spot, so he's very versatile. Um, he'll probably be playing uh, either safety or corner uh, for us this fall. But uh, a guy that's had played a lot of downs in this league, and uh, but we have some really good young kids uh, and some new players that are coming in that uh, are going to help us out in the secondary um, and really all across our our defense. We we brought in some really good players, um, and then we have some young kids that you know were kind of that in that number two spot last year. They didn't get all the reps that, uh, you know, we feel really good about that had good springs. And, you know, now they just got to get their feet wet and, 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 and play some football for us right away. But we're really excited about them. And, um, you know, I know Coach Williams, our defensive coordinator, um, is going to have that defense ready to go. And you mentioned it earlier, Coach, experience, and, and it can't be replicated. It just has to be earned and, and out there on the field. Uh, special teams, you look at uh, your special teams performers, solid performers last season, Ryan Lowry, who did well kicking field goals, also 44 of 45 extra point attempts. That's very solid. You want that to be auto automatic. And Andrew, almost your punter as well. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and it, a huge part of our success last year and moving forward to this year is our special teams. I think our – our coaches do a great job with that. And, and two big parts of that are, are Ryan and Andrew. Ryan was a first team all conference kicker. Like you said, it, you know, did a great job with field goals and PATs. I think one of the biggest weapons he is, I think he had something like 38 touchbacks last year. Um, so he's got a really good leg to be able to help our defense out. So they have to go the length of the field. Um, but uh, really excited about him. He'll be a senior. Um, and then Andrew almost uh, was number two in the country in his punting average last year. Did a heck of a job down inside the 20. Uh, he's been a two time. Uh, all-conference uh, punter for us. 
um, and has two years left and re really excited about Andrew, just a weapon uh, to be able to flip the field, um, really help out the offense and the defense. And then, um, you know, really excited about uh, the returners that we have coming back in the return game as well with, I mentioned Kyle Torgerson, uh, who was an all conference returner for us. And then a year ago, Mark Estes, the, the kid that got hurt last year, uh, was an all conference returner in 21. Um, so we'll have a couple weapons back there to, to be able to help in the return game as well. The season gets started in the not too distant future, Coach, on a Thursday night, and your schedule is bookended by Carroll. That should be a lot of fun. A nice, nice rivalry game there to begin and end the season. The first contest at home on August 31st, a Thursday night. That's an out of conference game. And then you all are on the road at Central Washington on September 9th and then September 16th back at home to start the Frontier Conference schedule proper against Eastern Oregon. And then no duplications on the conference schedule this year. So that has to be nice as well. Yeah, uh, I think we're excited about the schedule as far as, you know, adding Arizona Christian to be able to not play so many double ups. You know, the Carroll, we'll play Carroll twice, obviously. Um, they're a tremendous uh, team and program. Coach Purcell does a great job. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge, you know, game for us right off the bat with a big rivalry game um, and, and coming at home in our Copper game. It should be a lot of fun. It's, it'd be the, you know, to have a night game to start the season. It's the only going to be the only game in the state of Montana that night. Um, so we're, we're expecting, you know, eight to 10,000 people at that game. Um, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, but a heck of a challenge for us and our team. And uh, then we're excited. You know, we uh, were able to get Central Washington on the schedule. We originally had Simon Frazier. And then, fortunately, they lost their they lost their football program. Um, but excited to go play a really good Division II opponent um, on the road in Week Two, which would be a great challenge for us. And then, like you said, we'll get to open up the conference schedule uh, with Eastern Oregon um, right back for our homecoming game. And then, uh, like you said, we're, we'll play you know seven straight conference games, and um, you know like it, uh, it it's going to be a challenge every single week. There's great coaches and great players in this league, and. Uh, I think that's what makes it fun, though, is that, you know, every single week you got to be ready to go, um, you know, and, and it's a it's a heck of a challenge, but it makes it fun. And the competition level is, is an extremely high. And um, like I said, the, the coaches in this league uh, do a tremendous job and, and you got to be ready to go. And you mentioned it as well. I mean, when the preseason rankings come out, that likely to be three or four teams from the Frontier Conference in that top 25 to get things started. And coach, with the expanded playoffs this season, uh, it's not unreasonable to think two, possibly more Frontier Conference teams in the postseason. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I'm biased probably because I'm in the Frontier, but I, I, I've been a part of this league for 20 years as a player and a coach, and. Um, you know, there's been years we've had two. There's means we have three teams in here, and and I really believe just that from the top down, this is a very strong, strong conference. Uh, and, I, and I, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting two and hopefully three in. If our league, you know, especially now that we're not playing each other twice as much, I think that was always hurting us because we'd beat each other up. Um, but uh, yeah, the, I'm really excited about the you know the, going to 20 teams. I think that's a great thing for the NAI. I think it's going to really help our conference. Um, you know, hopefully to always get two in. And then, you know, potentially have the opportunity to get three three teams in, um, you know, and like you said, adding Arizona Christian, who's been a top 25 team the last couple of years, is only going to strengthen our conference, um, you know, and uh, we're hoping to, you know, continue to expand as well. I mean, uh, there's talks about, you know, possibly adding a couple more teams in the near future, uh, which if we get to the point where, you know, we only have to play every team once for a 10 game schedule, that, that'd be pretty great instead of having to double up. Right. Well, I do understand that, Coach, and we are looking forward to watching the Ore Diggers this season. Again, 7-3 and three last year, looking to build off that in 2023. Coach Kyle Sampson, thank you very much, sir, for taking time to preview the Ore Diggers here in 2023 on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet, and we will follow you. Awesome. Hey, Joey, I really appreciate you having me on, and if you wouldn't mind, the last thing I'd like to say that I'm most excited about, I think, is that we return our whole coaching staff uh, you know, from the top down. Uh, every position coach, which is the first time since I've been here that we've been able to keep every single coach around and uh, just a huge credit to them and what they do. Our assistant coaches do a tremendous job. And, um, you know, I, I think the success of our program is a direct reflection of of what they do every single day and the relationships they build with our players. And uh, I'm really excited to get to work with them. And um, they're a great group of guys that, uh, that really believe in what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, it's not because of me that we're going to be successful. It's because of the guys I got around me. Coach, that's a great addition to the conversation. I appreciate you adding that. Thank you very much, buddy.